I had quite a traumatic upbringing. I was uh, one of, or I am, one of 11 children, and uh, I was brought up in a foster home, so it wasn't the easiest childhood, I guess you'd say. I was assessed as backward when I was five or six, so it was a slow start for me, but I got going. Australian-born Richard Farley made millions as an investment banker and hedge fund manager, and is now renowned as a prolific investor in UK startup companies. Uh, but the guy came on and he had, he, he had this electronic egg cooker, which I was interested in straight away because I'm a really lousy cook and I thought anything that can make it easier to get the egg just perfect. So you just set your egg exactly how you want it, you turn it on and after two minutes or something it goes beep and it takes no water and exactly the same type of egg every time. So he sets it up to demonstrate it to us, his name's James, sets it up to demonstrate it to us, turns it on, asks Peter, Peter says he wants a soft boiled egg or whatever. So we're waiting for the egg to cook and then it goes ding. <coughs> And then says, okay, give us the egg, James. Opens it up. I forgot to put the egg in it. <laughs> like, <laughs> this guy's a real professor, you know. We're like, okay, okay, come on, get the egg, put it in. So he does it in, puts the egg in, turn it on. You know, wait, 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 ding. Oh, this one hasn't cooked either. I'm terribly sorry. I just know it hasn't, because I've done this so many times. But for some reason or other, this one hasn't cooked either. Look, I'm terribly sorry, but it does work, I promise you. Why didn't this one work? I haven't got a clue. And uh, I'm looking at him and I'm, look and I'm watching him and he's having the sort of reaction that you'd think he should have because he's, he's actually getting really annoyed. And I thought if he's trying to pull the wool over our eyes, he would be, he'd be much more sort of looking at us, wondering what we're thinking, look, waiting for our reaction. He wasn't. He was looking at that egg thing like he really wanted to <laughs> kick it across the room, like he was so peeved off. And I thought, well, I think the egg cooker probably does work. So, so I made him an offer and Peter came in as well, Peter Jones. Anyway... It, nothing ever happened because he then spent, uh, he was putting in £70,000, I think we were putting in £70,000, so it was match funding by himself. And he then, so it was all sort of shaking hands and everything. And then he went and spent two days with my guys up in Birmingham and we went right through it with him. And he wanted to race off to, to China and get it made and everything. And I said, no, 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 we're getting it made here, we're getting the prototype made here, we're getting, because we've seen what can happen with your prototypes, James. We are just going to get it all done, working absolutely perfectly, and then we'll get someone who knows how to do it to take it to China and get that design made. Anyway, and we also looked at very hard at his cost, because I'm very tough on costs. So we went right through with James and we, we said, we'll do this for 60000 here's a whole plan, let's see how we go. Even this plan I'm not sure about, but th this is the plan. And James's response to me was, well, I don't need your money. I've got 70,000, I'll do it. And he walked off. That was that. And I've only spoken to him once since. And what's interesting is, is that I think people underestimate business skills. And, and you know, it, it's, it's, if you're a doctor, you're called doctor. Or if you're, you know, if you're a plumber, you've got that certificate. But I think people with business skills, which I think is one of the hardest, most competitive activities there are, there's no formal you know, people, it, people just think they can do it. And I know, I've stuffed up so many times myself, I know how easy it is to stuff up. Anyway, so James just thought, well, he, it was only money, he doesn't need us. And to this day, it has not reached market. And I think he's missed a big opportunity to be first to market. Being a dragon is probably not as easy as it looks. You know, the, the entrepreneur can work, walk out without any money, but we can also walk out having blown 100 grand on bad investments. It's a bit like having a racehorse, but I do have confidence in, in what I think and, and uh, I really do try to think differently about things to most other people. Everybody who meets Levi just loves him. And, and I mean, the hug, I'm still recovering from the hug he gave me when I invested with him. And he did tell me that I'd be one of the few white people who could just walk through Brixton any time I like because I've backed him. Um, but he came on the show, you know, obviously singing this song, if you saw it, he sang this fantastic song because he was a singer as well with his guitar. And uh, he, he presented this plan and I caught him out uh, because he was, he was out by a factor of about a thousand on his numbers. Levi, can I just, uh, I just want to, it's something I don't understand. Um, uh, you've got an order for two and a half thousand kilos. Yeah. Is that the one you're saying is two and a half million litres? Yeah. Because I don't think that's right. Not two and a half thousand. Two hundred and fifty thousand, isn't it? Two thousand five hundred kilos. 
It's two th so it's, two, two so it's a lot less than you think it is. It, it, it's it is? two and a half thousand. The order is for two, two and, and a half thousand, thousand kilos. Well, a, a kilo is about the same as a litre. If it's water, it's exactly the same. Yeah. So it's not two and a half million litres. If you've got two and a half thousand of kilos, it's two and a half thousand litres. Okay. And so he had this order for someone for his, for his sauce. He was making, sorry, I should guess if you haven't seen it, you don't know what, what he was selling, but he's selling this jerk sauce, this, this spicy sauce. And really, to be, when, when, you, when you test this, you know, if you want to do it properly, you've got to have a whole bunch of sauces and test, you know, you, you've got to do a blind tasting. But obviously on Dragon's Den, you just get to taste the sauce and you either like it or don't like it. But, so it wasn't really the sauce I backed, it was really the guy. Who, if I stood here and I had lost money on this sauce, you would think, of course you've lost money on that sauce, you madman. But actually, it, it's, it's been, it's in percentage terms, been one of my best investments. I put £20,000 into it uh, about, you know, less than 18 months ago, and I just sold out, because I've learnt to sell when things are going well, sometimes. <laughs> uh, I've just sold out for £200,000. So in the space of 18 months, uh, they've sold, we have sold, or they have sold, 2 million bottles. It was the biggest selling source in the UK for a while. I think it's still right up there and exited at, at 10 times my investment.